My name is Esther Mvungi, as I've been introduced. I'm going to talk about the experiment that I did in, during my fellowship in South Africa. This was a one-year fellowship that aimed at uh, exploring effect of climate change in different uh, topics based on institution outside the country. So I got a chance to go to South Africa and I spent one year in doing this experiment. So <clears throat> back to the study, I will talk about the effect of warming and the nutrient enrichment on the Zostera capensis. I will maintain Zostera capensis. If taxonomists are arguing that is none of Zostera, I will still talk about capen uh, Zostera capensis. So I will take you to the, we have been hearing this the whole, like starting from Monday, we are talking about the importance of sea grasses. We know that they are very important. Of course, they are considered the ecological engineers because they provide a lot of uh, goods and services, and they actually sustain some livelihood of a uh, human population along the coast. And also, if you accrue all these uh, services and the resources that are generated from the sea grasses middle, Waikotetal 2009 estimated that it is worth 1.9 trillion uh, US dollar per year. I don't know if it is still the same up to now. But regardless of this, sea grass middle are continuing to de deteriorate due to the pressure that is coming from anthropogenic activities. And this is just to mention a few nutrient enrichment. Uh, build up of greenhouse gases that contributed to uh, global warming and the uh, ocean acidification. And therefore, there is a lot of reports that are reporting or uh, results on the individual effect of these stressors, but we know that the stressors are not acting in isolation. They occur in a uh, concept. So we need to assess how they respond or how this global uh, effect, we consider the warming as a global stressor and the nutrient as a local stressor. So we are trying to look at how global climate uh, change stressors can influence the local uh, stressors. So to do this, uh, the main goal of this study was to develop actually a general prediction on how this Zostera capensis will react or will respond upon the, uh, the stressors, the combined stressors, temperature and the nutrient, uh, nutrient enrichment. And so that from there we can contribute the, to the growing knowledge on the effects of global warming and nutrient enrichment on the seagrass performance. And so to do this, I will start by highlighting the Zostera capensis. This is a temperate species uh, that is having a ra uh, distribution range from west coast of South Africa up to East Africa in Kenya. And it is listed as a vulnerable species according to IUCN. And this is because of the increased rate of uh, uh, declining. And actually it is reported that about 38% of the loss of a cover has happened in the past five decades in some area in South Africa, and this is according to Pillai et al. 2010. So, and also this species is actually a habitat to the critically endangered species of limpet, that is Fonaria compressor. Uh, so the sea grasses were collected from Langaban Lagoon, and, uh, oops, sorry, how do I go back? There. Yeah. It was collected from Langban Lagoon, and the samples were collected, were collected, and then transported to the lab, where they were allowed to acclimatize for one week, and then initiated to the uh, treatment. So the experiment setup included, it was two factor times three levels. That means we have three levels of temperature, ambient temperature, uh, which was 18, 24 degrees centigrade and 30 for the temperature and it was achieved by using the aquarium heaters. And 
the levels for nutrient was the same. It is ambient, uh, moderate, two times ambient, and the three times to, to, to five times ambient uh, it was considered high. And this one was uh, achieved by actually using the slow releasing uh, fertilizer, osmocote fertilizer. And these levels of nutrient were the final loading rate were uh, actually similar to the range that has been reported to occur in estuaries of East, uh, in South Africa and including the highly eutrophic, eutrophic systems as you can see the, the reference there. So that is the setting. Uh, it was conducted in the lab and these are the mesocosms, uh, the plastic containers where each container contain, uh, was subjected to a different treatment and then the following variables were analyzed and it was morphometric, that means morphological features including shoot number, growth rate, leaf length and uh, biomass and the photosynthesis efficiency and also carbon nitrogen uh, phosphorus content. And what about the results? This is what we find. <coughs> the effect of shoot, shoot number and shoot length declined significantly with the, the increase in nutrient as well as increase in temperature. So you can see in this one is about shoot, uh, shoot number and this one is the length. So they have, there is negative effect of both temperature and the nutrient on the, this uh, variables. Similarly to the leaf width and leaf number, there is a decline. That is re in response to nutrient, but not the temperature. So this one indicates that the plant uh, is affected morphologically, physically, uh, physiologically, it is affected by the stressors, so it could not uh, tolerate the, the stressors. And on the biomass, both the nutrient and temperature affected only above ground biomass, but there was no significant difference on the below ground biomass. And with the epiphyte, the epiphyte, epiphyte load on the seagrass leaf were, was enhanced by both temperature and the nutrient, uh, but there were no interaction between these stressors. And uh, when you're determining the effect, uh, effect size, actually temperature had a large effect size compared to nutrient stressors. And so this is uh, indicating that sometimes global uh, stressors can have influence on the local stressors. And actually the growth rate also were also affected by nutrient but not temperature. And only photosynthetic uh, capacity uh, with the FVFM, which is quantum, a maximum quantum yield, there was no significant difference between the treatment, but a significant difference were observed in the effective quantum yield of the, the seagrass, so indicating that some effect on the uh, photosynthetic, uh, uh, photosynthetic two, the PS2 a system had some had, was affected by uh, the stressors that were subjected to this uh, plant. On the CNP ratio, the pattern is not uh, clear, but there are some effect on carbon storage and uh, nitrogen had no significant difference on the above ground, but only the effect of temperature on the below ground, and so it is, the pattern is not that clear. So the influence of this on the seagrass was not so evident. It was not a clear or it didn't respond very well to the, uh, to the treatment. So in conclusion, we see that uh, the results of this study uh, demonstrate the significant effects of temperature and the nutrient on the sterocarpensi uh, physiology. Uh, but the effect actually was much higher for nutrient than for warming. So because we determined the effect, uh, size effect of the, the, the stressors. 
and the, in most rest, uh, in most variables, nutrients had a higher value compared to the temperature. So, and it has this one is contributing the key uh, predicting changes in the regional ecosystem functioning in the face of global climate change. Therefore, uh, the increase of these stressors or the continuing uh, imposing these seagrass to these stressors has led to there is uh, some shift in architectural uh, attribute of the seagrass. That means that we have seen changes in shoot density, we have seen changes in size of the leaf. All these have cascading effect. It can alter the ecosystem because we know that seagrass is supporting a lot of organism and so changing the uh, architectural structure or attributes will automatically or, uh, affect the performance of other organisms so it will ramify to that end. So with the uncontrolled increase of the stressors in the eco uh, coastal ecosystems, the sea grasses will, be, will still continue to decline unless some other, uh, maybe some management plan are put in place so that it will hold or to reduce the effect. And what can the, pro the proposed action that can be taken by this manager, it, it includes maybe creating, oh sorry, creating awareness like we have seen from different groups they were presenting about stu a young student being uh, like there is program that are supporting this young student to be aware of what is going on but also you can impose some monitoring program to assess what is there, what is affected, what is, so what is going on in the system. But also you can have restoration program or rehabilitation program. For example, in the rehabilitation program you can use sink plant. You grow plants that can filter nutrients before they go to, into the sea. And that is the end of the presentation. I thank all these institutions and I thank you also for being here. Thank you. We have time for some questions. Thank you, Esther. I'm very proud of you <laughs> for that presentation. I just have a small question. You mentioned in the beginning that Sostra Capensis, or whatever they want to call it now, is a, a vulnerable species, I think it was, or yeah, threatened, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because of a 35% decline. Is that decline that has been reported, is that uh, mainly due to these uh, two stressors that you have looked at or do you know anything about? No, the actually the 38% the that I reported is only for the system in South Africa. It's not uh, across the, the globe, the, the area where the, it is found. But it is plus these factors and other factors like dredging or trampling. People, they go there and they do some. And actually this area is restricted because it's a, a national park. There is restrict, restricted access to that area. It is divided in three different zones where you have area that you can access, area that you cannot access, or you, want, you access with the permit, and the no-tech zone, the area that you... So it is, plus these two, there are some other factors that can... Yeah. Hi, Esther. Thank you for your talk. That's quite impressive effort pushing all that seagrass back on the, on the surfboard. <laughs> but what I was wondering about, what sort of temperatures um, do the seagrasses experience where you, where you collected them from? Because I was quite surprised that um, you didn't have such huge temperature effects because it seems very high to me for South Africa, 30 degrees. Do you know what the natural temperatures are? Yeah, actually it is ranging from 15 up to 20, 25 sometimes. So 30, I thought it is too much. And it has been reported, actually there is one work that was done on the same. They did that range and it has been reported that this is the temperature range that you can find during different times. Okay, and how long did you run your experiments for? This experiment is for 
six weeks, the first week for acclimatization and the five weeks for treatment. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I think we are done for the day. Um, can we have a round of applause for all the speakers? <laughs>